Okay, it's time for another video. Let's see. We're going to do uh, a video on how to thread a console. This is a 226, 226, and it's styled after the Singer, but it's made its own name. The console is built like a tank. Um, I'm going to show you how to thread the machine. First, we start with the thread spool right here. Um, pulls the thread straight up. We've got these thread holders and then it comes down to the machine. Now if you have the thread so that the thread comes off to one side, what's going to happen is as it strips off the spool it's going to get caught on this side. So you've got to put this directly over the top so that when it pulls the thread it will just pull it straight off the spool around and around without any resistance. Now, then it's going to come down to the machine. There's a post in the center that has two holes. The hole in the bottom uh, is where you feed it first. And it comes from the right, goes to the left. Then it goes up to the top hole and it goes from the right to the left, coming out the back side. From there, it gets down to uh, this right here. Now, people have um, threaded it a couple of different ways, but this is the way that the manual actually tells you how to do it. So, you come in from the bottom. You go up into the middle hole, then you go down. Then, you come up from the bottom to the last hole on the left, and then you come up. Now, I've seen it done like a barbershop pole where they just kind of thread it around like that, but that's not how the console manual shows it. From there, it goes through your tensioner discs. Now, when you go through the tensioner discs, what you want to make sure that you do is that you pull the thread down so that it really slips to the inner um, core of the tensioner discs so it's actually working. From there, it's going to go to the right around this disc here and this disc has a small spring on it. But if you look very, very closely to this side, you'll see that there is a metal piece that kind of goes towards you. The thread has to go up and you yank on it and it'll go around that little metal piece. From there, it drops to the middle and then it goes by the spring, okay? And then from the spring, you go straight up through this, right here, this guide. Now the guide, you'll see all the guides will be broken on one side. So when you put the thread through there and you pull the top and the bottom of the thread uh, to the left, the thread will automatically slip under that, that broken piece, the uh, disconnected piece there, and then it will end up inside of the guide. From there, you go up to your take-up arm and it will go through. We're going from the right to the left side. Then the thread comes down and it goes through another guide and this threads exactly like the last one you just put some tension on it pull it from the right to the left and it will snap inside of here from there you go down to yet another guide same principle it's broken on one side not connected you put the thread here you pull both the top and the bottom over this way and it will snap itself inside of here now I've also seen um, pictures where there's a piece of cotton in here and sometimes people lubricate it, but this machine did not have it. Now, then you go down to the needle itself and there's a last thread guide. Now this one is a little tricky because it looks like a washer and um, if you see this groove here you can tell that the thread was supposed to go right into that groove through the thread guide. So you want to make sure that you do that. Now, um, what you'll end up doing is you're going to end up um, going down into the needle. Now on the needle you're going to come in from the left side and then you're going to go through the right side and that's how you thread your machine. And what I'll, I'll do now is um, I'm going to explain to you that the um, uh, needle itself has to be positioned properly. Now in order to position the needle properly what ends up happening is um, you have to know what's going on down below the needle. And then we pull this off, and this is the bobbin holder. Now, with the bobbin holder pulled off, what you'll see is, you'll see that there is 
um, a little arm and it's right there that arm there um, the, th the thread on the bobbin now it comes out this arm here lifts up and you drop the bobbin straight in this is a paper bobbin it's disposable they come already wound and what you do is you drop the bobbin on there and the bobbin is going to be um, unthreading from the left side so looking down on it it's counterclockwise you're going to pull it this way and it's going to go right through this little groove here then you're going to pull it this way through um, this little hook here now if you have any problems getting through the hook there's a trick and all you have to do is manually turn your wheel and when you do that it will move the shuttle like that and then you can get the thread through and then the thread you just lay it down here now once you have your top thread through the needle you're going to pull it and give yourself a little slack like this so essentially after you've got the bobbin threaded the bobbin thread is not going to come up through the top the way you see it so it will be down in here after you pull it through this groove and through there it'll be down and you can just lay it in there now what will happen is you'll manually move the uh, the wheel here and you see you can see the top thread it's pulling it's, it would pull out if it was real short but I pulled it out quite a bit about four or five inches there so it won't go and unthread itself now you're gonna go down and you'll see that the bobbin thread right there is now being um, pulled by this hook when the hook gets over it will pull the thread from the top and the two will intertwine now when that happens what you have to do simply is grab the end of the top thread that's protruding out and pull if it doesn't pull that means you need to keep pull keep rotating on the um, wheel now what I've done here is uh, I can see what I did uh, so I left the uh, lever down the bobbin lever that should have been locked down so we're gonna try it one more time and um, so you'll know not to do that so let's pull the bobbin thread out just like before drop the lever down now we've dropped the lever down the bobbin thread is out and when we start initially our top thread goes through the needle and it's just sitting there so let's do that again we're gonna we're gonna rotate your wheel here and you'll see the, the top thread is pulling but it's long enough that it won't pull out of the needle it's gonna go down and then you can see the hook and it's gonna go around it's gonna grab the bobbin thread and it will then intertwine it with the top thread now once that happens you want to pull the top thread out and again um, if it doesn't pull out all the way then just continue moving that the uh, hand wheel over here and that's this is what I'm rotating so you want to pull it towards you like this now you continue pulling it and then the uh, bobbin will complete its its revolution and at that point you should be able to pull the thread through now you can see right here this is what I was talking about earlier where that space isn't enough so just pull the pulley a little more and it'll free itself so you get to that point you pull this up the top thread and now you'll see that it automatically pulled the bobbin thread up and that's how you thread the console 226 now there is a console 225 there's actually lots and lots of these machines it's, um, I'm just familiarizing myself with these but basically the the model number for the consoles are right here at the base of the machine and again this is a 226 this is actually a 226 R and R is for reverse the difference between the 225 and the 226 is that the 225 does not have reverse easiest way to tell this lever right here that lever is your reverse lever if you don't have that on your machine then you have a console 225 most likely if the sticker is missing and again these are stylized after Singer machines so the um, the Singer model number was the 111 and um, th there's usually a 111 W and then there's a 113 which is very similar to the 225 and and then there's the 153 I believe which is similar to the 226 so it's 111 W 150 
three, I think, and that's the singer with reverse. And the parts are interchangeable for the most part. You can even interchange the presser foot and um, the feed down there. And that's it for now. Thanks. Bye.